All right, so let's dive into this one. It's a Christmas Carol, but uh, we're going deeper this time. Yeah, it's a fascinating book. It's a ghost story, but it's social commentary. Yeah. It's character study. It's all these things. I love that about it. You know, I get swept up in the characters and the emotional parts, but uh, <laughs> right. you know, you always bring out these deeper questions, sort of the philosophical side of Dickens. Yeah. And we're going to look at how those two sides kind of play off each other. Okay. So you'll be our guide to the hearts of these characters, and I'll kind of dig into the ideas. Love it. But before we get into all that, yeah. um, maybe just a quick reminder for everyone listening. Mm -hmm. What is A Christmas Carol about? So basically, it's about Ebenezer Scrooge. He's the ultimate grumpy miser right. who just despises Christmas. Hates it. And then he gets visited by three spirits. And they kind of force him to understand what the holiday is about. And these aren't your friendly ghosts. These are like no, Christmas no. past, present, and yet to come. Right. Exactly. These are serious spirits. <laughs> yeah, they take him on a wild ride. Yeah. And Dickens wastes no time, like, establishing Scrooge's character. Right. Like, right away you get that line about Marley. As dead as a doornail. Yeah. It's morbid, but it's funny. The oh, chuckle, yeah. right? Yeah. It's classic Dickens. Yeah. And then he just drops you right into 19th century London. Yeah. And the descriptions are incredible. Oh, they're so vivid. The palpable brown air of the fog. You can feel it, right. It's like you're choking on it with him. Yeah. He paints these pictures with words. And then there's that misanthropic ice. Even the ice is grumpy. Oh, I love that detail. Yeah, Dickens uses the setting not just as backdrop, but really as a reflection of Scrooge's inner state. It's cold. It's isolated. Yeah, he's shut off from the world. And then you have Fred, his nephew... Who bursts in like full of Christmas cheer. Just a contrast. Scrooge basically throws, bah, humbug yeah. at him like it's a weapon. And that scene really gets at the tension in the book, right? You have Fred. He's relatively poor, but he finds joy and connection in the spirit of the season. Right. And then you have Scrooge. Rich, but totally miserable, clinging to his wealth. So that's where the ghosts come in. To shake him up. Yeah. Like, force him to see what he's become. Right. But it's not just a lecture. It's an emotional journey. And we start with the ghost of Christmas past. And that's where we'll pick up in the next part of our deep dive. We'll explore Scrooge's past, his choices. All the baggage. All that emotional baggage. Get ready for some soul searching. Oh, yeah. So we left off with Scrooge about to go on this journey. Yeah. With the ghost of Christmas past. With the ghost of Christmas past. And this is where it gets really intense. Oh, for sure. It's like watching a hard defrost. You see Scrooge as a young boy alone at boarding school. Mm. Oh. And you just, you feel for him. You know why he has these walls up. Yeah, that loneliness. It's like it carries into his adulthood, too. Yeah, well, we see him with Belle. She's lovely, you know. She seems to genuinely care for him. But even then, you can see that, like, his obsession with money. Yeah. It's starting to take root. That scene when Belle breaks off the engagement, oh, yeah. it kills me every time. She says, another idol has displaced me. It's so sad. You just see the heartbreak. That she can see what he's becoming. Yeah, yeah. What's interesting here is that Dickens is exploring this idea of free will. Hmm. Like, was Scrooge always going to become this bitter old miser? Right. Or could he have chosen a different path? Did seeing his past give him a chance? Yeah, like even a little chance to break free. I mean, that's something we all think about, right? Oh, yeah. The what ifs. The what ifs, Tony. But Dickens, he doesn't just leave it at that. No. He shows us what happens. Yeah. The consequences of Scrooge's actions. Yeah, it's not pretty. No, not pretty at all. Mm -hmm. And speaking of consequences, let's move on to the ghost of Christmas present. Oh, this is a fun one. What's well, like sensory overloads? Like Dickens throws every Christmas cliche at you. Feasts, carol. Everything. And then he hits you with the cratchits. Yeah, that's deliberate. Mm -hmm. Dickens wants us to see this real poverty yeah. alongside this kind of perfect image of Christmas. Right. The cratchits, they're struggling, but there's so much love. So much love. Tiny Tim just breaks your heart. Yeah. So tiny and innocent, but still so joyful. Yeah. Do you think Scrooge sees himself in Tim? Ooh, maybe. Like a little bit of that child he used to be. Before the bitterness. Before the bitterness took over. And this is where he says that awful line about decreasing the surplus population. Can you imagine? Dickens isn't just talking about poverty here. No. He's calling out how the wealthy are indifferent to the poor. It's scary, honestly. It's chilling. But it's also, I think, a turning point for Scrooge. Maybe. You start to see him crack a little. He's moved by the Cratchits. 
by Tiny Tim. And then Dickens introduces those figures, ignorance and want. It's like they're clinging to the ghost of Christmas present. It's like he's saying, this is what happens if you ignore poverty. Right. These are the consequences. Like those forces are going to consume the next generation. And he's not letting the reader off the hook. You yeah, know? not at all. He's asking us, what are you doing about it? Are you part of the problem? Yeah, exactly. It's a question that's still relevant today. Totally. Dickens was writing over 150 years ago. Right. But his message is so important now. Yeah. A Christmas Carol is more than just a cute Christmas story. Way more. It's a call to action. It is. But before we get too ahead of ourselves. Yeah. We have to talk about the last part of Scrooge's journey. The ghost of Christmas yet to come. This is where it gets terrifying. Talk about terrifying, this yeah. ghost. It's all silence and shadows. Just a glimpse of the future. A bleak future. A bleak future. His death. Nobody cares! Indifference. It, his stuff gets picked apart. His name is Curse. It's like Dickens is saying, this is what a life without love looks like. Without connection. And the genius is that it doesn't preach. It just shows him. It just shows him. The ultimate consequence. Total isolation. You can feel Scrooge's fear. Oh, yeah. He's desperate for a second chance to change his story. And that's where we'll pick up next time. Next time. We'll talk about Scrooge's redemption. The final chapter. And what it all means for us. Mm. So we left Scrooge facing that bleak future. Alone meaningless like talk about a wake-up call right but is that enough to change someone i mean is it real change or just fear that's the question right dickens doesn't really tell us he leaves it open which is what makes it so interesting because on the surface scrooge does a complete 180 yeah he wakes up christmas morning like a changed man like he's possessed by the spirit of giving almost it's almost funny right it is kind of like the way he throws himself into it Sending the turkey to the Cratchits, giving to charity. Yeah, like skipping down the street. Wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. It's the opposite of who he was. But what always gets me is you see it in his face, you know? What do you mean? The joy. It's real. He's not faking it. He's actually happy. He's genuinely happy to be spreading happiness. Like he's finally found something he was missing. And that's where Dickens gets it right, you know? What do you mean? Scrooge isn't just acting different. He's seeing the world differently. He's realizing the connection, generosity. Yeah. That it brings a deeper kind of happiness. Than money ever could. There's that line where he says, I don't know anything. I'm quite a baby. Yeah, he's starting over. He's admitting he was wrong. He wants to make things right. And that scene with Bob Cratchit. Oh, yeah. He doesn't just give him a raise. He promises to be like a father to Tiny Tim. That's huge. Just shows real commitment. He's not just doing this for Christmas. Right. But even with all that, you still wonder, yeah. was it really genuine? Or was it just to avoid that future? That scary future the ghost showed him. Again, Dickens doesn't give us an easy answer. He lets us decide. He makes us think. Because let's be honest. Yeah. Even if it was just fear at first, his actions are good, right? It doesn't matter. It's like, do the ends justify the means? It's a tough question. Dickens makes us think about those gray areas. Yeah, like, is it enough to just do the right thing? Or does your intention matter, too? And can fear really change you that much? As much as love or compassion. These are big questions. They are. They go way beyond the story. They make you think about your own life, your choices. Exactly. It's what makes A Christmas Carol so timeless. It's not just a Christmas story. It's about what it means to be human. The power of choice, the potential to change. So I think the big takeaway here yeah. is that A Christmas Carol makes you think. It makes you question your own assumptions. Yeah, like what are the consequences of your choices? We can enjoy the story, the happy ending. But we shouldn't ignore those deeper questions. Tickens wants us to wrestle with them. They're what make it so powerful, even today. And maybe if we think about them, maybe we can all find a little bit of that Christmas spirit. Not just at Christmas. But all year round. Exactly.